I don't think my role is at the uh, highest level. It's uh, so I would go to politics or something like this if I was maybe interested in it or if I was convinced that it was going to change something. That's another topic. But uh, uh, right now, I think the strongest message I can have uh, is uh, by by being just who I am and trying to be as close as possible to this ideal uh, without judging anyone and just uh, sh sharing also my mistakes. Welcome to the Whole Sick Nutrition Hub podcast, the show that helps you take your nutrition business, marketing, and consulting to the next level. On today's episode, I'll be chatting with author, educator, and coach, Will Jensens. Hey, Will, thanks for coming on the podcast. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, I'll try to do my best to have a, a decent level of English. Uh, as you know, I'm not so used to it, but hopefully it will be fun. Thank you for having me. So far, so good. Everybody's going to understand you just fine. To give a little bit of context, Will and I have already spoken before on my other podcast, the Upside Strength Podcast. We were directing that conversation a little bit more towards the fitness side of things uh, because Will has that um, particularity of, of evolving in, in both spheres, both the fitness, health, and nutrition sphere. Uh, but today's conversation, Will, I wanted to first of all go into your background and then talk about your lifestyle in general and then how you work with clients to give a brief overview. But let's dive right in and I'll give the mic to you. Can you talk a little bit about who you are, what you do, uh, and how you got there? Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, my name is Will. Uh, it's for William Janssen. It's just a, I prefer the, the brief, uh, the brief name. Uh, I live in Switzerland. Uh, I started uh, my life in Geneva, and then um, um, I started my uh, academic uh, background, so the studies in um, in sports sciences. Uh, at the very beginning, I wanted simply to be a, a sport teacher i don't know if the, the term is correct in english but uh, for uh, for school okay and um then uh, i i switched um, the direction when i uh, when i realized that uh, i really enjoyed uh, everything around physiology in general and um of course uh, i love sports but uh it wasn't enough not to say it's it wasn't enough as a, a career uh uh, goal, but uh, uh, I started to get more interested in the in, in the science science part. That's why I um, I did a master degree in um, something called training and performance. But um, I ended up uh, being completely um, in a um, clinical uh, group, uh, a, stu a study group, and. Mm -hmm. um, um we we were working with uh, so with humans it's important to 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 say this in uh, in science as uh, you can uh, uh, when you talk about physiology and you study physiology uh, work with animals of course mm -hmm. and um the goal was to understand what was the 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 effect of uh, physical activity in the elderly people um and uh, would it be possible basically to match all the things that you can get with medication but only with physical activity so mm -hmm. it was really really cool to do this um, i ended up um, staying more than two years here so uh, my master thesis was a little bit in between uh, of course not a phd because a phd is between three to to five years in this uh, department actually but uh, yeah, I, I really, I was completely uh, in this group uh, for two whole years, uh, waking up really early to <laughs> to help uh, the the patients uh, with their um, how do you say this indirect calorimetry. So we were uh, we were uh, measuring the, the the amount of calories they were burning in a mm -hmm. medical setup and all these things. And uh, you know, uh, as you know, all these things take time. Yes. <laughs> and. Um, yeah, at the end, uh, I ended up publishing one article, which is not amazing, but at least you can find one article uh, with my name on uh, on PubMed or ResearchGate or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, after this, um, I did one um, um, postgrad diploma, so not a whole master degree uh, in um, social sciences and sports. Mm -hmm. I have uh, pretty much the equivalent of two years of uh, academic background in uh, social sciences psychology and all these kinds of things um and uh, yeah after this uh, i decided rather than doing a phd because that's, that was the, the first goal uh, to start um a business in general in uh, in sports sciences and see where i can go and uh, right now uh, 
I, I, I've published um, three different books um, related to fat loss, uh, muscle gain, and uh, fitness in general. And, um, and uh, yeah, right now I have a, a few other projects and I'm coaching clients online. And now that I'm coaching clients online and that I have my projects online as well, mm-hmm. um, I live in the mountains right now with, uh, <laughs> with um, you know, I have... Um, uh, you say hen, uh, two two hen houses with 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 a lot of um, hen, and um, yeah, we have our, our garden, and we have a, a pretty simple life actually. We live in a in the typical Swiss mountain. You you say your chalet, <laughs> so we live right. in a chalet, <laughs> and. Um, uh, and yeah, so um, even if um, I, I did some things that were uh, maybe serious, uh, if I may say this this way, uh, from the, the academic uh, perspective. Um, yeah, my goal was more to to try to find a, a sort of co- coherent approach um, between everything that that is happening um, today, uh, which is pretty crazy to sum it up, <laughs> and um, <laughs> how you can uh, uh, actually still get good nutrition and uh, still have um, um, a level of. Um, um, you, you want to know also what, what is the impact on the ecology and this kind of things. Uh, um, I don't know where exactly you, you want me to go, but to put it simply, yeah, I have an academic background and still I ended up having a, having a pretty normal, uh, simple life. But uh, that's, uh, that was basically my goal. So it's, I don't know where you want to go, but uh, the, this is who I am. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe we can start from the beginning. When when did you first realize that the way that you were living your life was an important part of what you wanted to do and that you had to try and align yourself with maybe as a general term, your philosophy of maybe of life, maybe it's a broad term, but uh, it yeah. does, you know, I think talking about a holistic approach, you take all of those different factors into consideration. Like you said, the social aspect, economic aspect, ecological aspect, um, and so I think it's, it's, it's a really interesting approach. So I'm interesting where it started. What, what was the first thing that kind of clicked in your mind and you said, okay, that's how I need to do things. Oh, okay. okay excellent. I'll try to, to go back a little bit in my memory here. So I think around 2013, um, I, I started to see things like really, you know, the typical, uh, you say, alternative guy, like uh, trying <laughs> all yeah, the things, uh, right. going to the organic market and uh, mm-hmm. talking with people with dreadlocks. I had dreadlocks, obviously, <laughs> myself too. <laughs> uh, my ex-girlfriend had uh, had the dreadlocks as well. So, you know, uh, just to, it's not even an, an exaggeration. It started like this, like uh, suddenly boom big things happening uh, well I, I don't need to be um, I, I don't need to eat meat anymore and then I, eventually I, I went vegan for a while for five years mm-hmm. and um, and uh, yeah recently uh, last year actually I started uh, what we call the PTC permaculture cer- uh, designer certificate mm-hmm. um, it's not completely done yet because it was interrupted with um, the COVID thing and um, yeah so uh, to to put this in perspective, uh, I would say first I realized a few things about you know ecology. I uh, watched uh, a few documentaries with yeah, well, happened not to be that good eventually when I understood exactly how they they were made. But anyway, that's how a few things happen. Um, I don't want to go too too far there, but you know uh, what happens with what what is happening right now with the animals basically. Mm-hmm. Um, to say the least, we can do much better mm-hmm. uh, and. Uh, as a, an omnivore or as a vegetarian, huh? just to say, in general, we can clearly do better. And uh, do, do, I have. Do you mind? Sorry, sorry to cut you off. Do you mind going into a bit more detail? What was your perspective back then uh, on how we treat animals and yeah. how the whole, you know, maybe the the whole chain of production of foods in the animal realm uh, is? And then how has that perspective shifted or or maybe moved a little bit since then? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I think that's the the perfect way to 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 move to the next point because uh, I wanted to talk about um, what happens when you go uh, to the supermarket and you buy the things you want to eat, basically. So it, it seems really simple at the beginning, and when you start to uh, get interested in um, uh, in nutrition, you want to know how things are made. You want to see uh, how many ingredients you have, why they are here, and uh, you know this kind of things. And um, if you are curious, 
and uh, well, if you are really curious or if you're even passionate about this, uh, of, of course, you end up going a little bit further and a little bit further and you, you end up seeing things. So how are things made from the very beginning? And so you, 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 you realize every time there's uh, someone else um, uh, trying to sell something, he takes a, you know, a little bit of, of money and that's how it's made. It's normal. It's not a mm -hmm. problem. It's just how it is. So you need to be conscious about this. And um, the, more, the more you move uh, backward, the, um, I mean, the, the, the further you go, uh, the deeper you go, sorry, uh, you, you you end up um, talking about the soil, like directly the soil. How what what we have right now, for example, uh, in France, in Switzerland, in Belgium, or well, in the French-speaking um, countries, uh, what what are we doing with the soil? Is it still alive? Like literally, because the twenty-first centimeters in the uh, in the in the soil uh, is probably where you can find the, the biggest amount of life in the the, the whole planet. So even mm -hmm. if we don't see it, that's that's the hard part of it we don't see it uh, it's not invisible but you really you have to look at it you have to put your, your hands in the ground then you start to understand that uh, the in french monoculture do you say this in english monoculture uh, yeah monoculture okay cool um so when you do monoculture with um, um probably you say um petrochimie so chemistry around uh, petrochemical yeah. I guess you could petrochemical say. probably well basically all the things you use uh, uh, pesticides and all, oh, yeah. all, all that um, so um, it, it's it sounds great uh, for the amount of uh, food you want to produce mm -hmm. uh, without the, the necessity to understand how nature it's a big word I know it works and uh, of course you think well you you need this amount of kilos of uh, zeros and whatever and uh, you want to make sure that you can have them and uh, that you know you, you can make money out of it uh, and you can well give enough for people so mm -hmm. you you understand this and then you realize that uh, many things are wrong with this and uh, it's probably one of the biggest problem we face right now is uh, how uh, is our soil so you you start to be uh, more and more interested in how you can have a uh, uh, a regenerative uh, effect on soil and uh, you realize many things and so at the beginning at the very beginning okay i was vegan and i understood a few things that were not so good so just to uh, make fun of my own self a little bit earlier i was what i call a vegan warrior of uh, supermarkets so <laughs> you you pretend that you are going to change the world that you buy uh, uh, tofu you, you buy soy uh, basically soy products uh, super uh, like High, uh, highly processed uh, soil products and you call yourself a vegan and you think you are going to change the world. I'm just exaggerating a little bit, but that's uh, how I was um, earlier. And and then this uh, thing about the soil happens and I, I realized that, you know, for example, grass-fed beefs, things like this, the way you uh, produce things, even as an omnivore, um, mm -hmm. and this is important to say it, um, you, you can have a, a better impact on the environment as long as you're conscious about how everything um, has an impact on the, the rest of the, uh, the, the chain product, the, the, the rest of the, the, the process of the, yeah. um, the, the, what, what you are eating eventually. So uh, that's pretty much how, how things came. So you, you start to go to the supermarket, you get interested in nutrition. So you start to look at what the ingredients are and then you just go a little bit deeper and you end up uh, considering the, the whole process basically. And, uh, and there's not, Thing you can really completely um, remove for example let's say uh, this is a bad example but I'm going to use it anyway let's let's say you can have um, uh, palm oil that is not too bad for uh, you and your health well let's say saturated fat are not that bad let's put it on the side of palmitate for a second and let's say you have no problem with your LDL just to do a brief summary and you want to eat palm oil because you think it's not so bad and uh, the, the types of fat are not going, going to be um, too oxidized or things like this anyway you eat it and then you uh, don't consider the fact that it's one of the one of the worst types of culture that you can have in the world and this is not a, a secret i guess uh, for for the audience but uh, um you you cannot just say this is good for me but it's not good at all for the environment because eventually um uh, the the connection you have with nature and what you do um and what you share on social media or whatever 
if it's coherent, it's much easier because you don't have to say, well, I'm not going to post this on uh, Instagram because people then I'm going, going to say, uh, think that uh, I'm not really into ecology and all that. Well, I'm not going to post this on Instagram because I said I was veg vegetarian, but when, what now I'm eating some uh, beef liver. What's the, what's the thing about all of that? And basically, uh, as long as you put the effort uh, into uh, looking a little bit deeper on what's going on, because a lot of things are hidden. And it, it, I understand, I mean, if you want to, um, to sell more uh, meat products, you don't want people to see everything that is happening because, okay, you can make money out of it, but how, how it's done, it's not going to, going to be sexy for anyone, like literally mm -hmm. anyone. Even uh, someone who loves meat uh, is not going to like every single um, uh, stage of the, the process. Mm -hmm. it's, I, I mean, I think it's not possible. Maybe maybe some people will say, ha, ha, it's cool what's happening, but I hope it's not the case because it's just awful. But w when you see how things can be done uh, even when you eat meat um, you you have so many alternatives that can be uh, more coherent if i may use this term mm -hmm. um, that basically that's that was the message i don't want people to uh, feel culpabilize feel, feel ashamed you say no feel ashamed yeah feel, feel ashamed about what i'm saying or something it's just um, helping people to um, understand that not everything is so uh, simple as you go to the supermarket, you buy, and then that's it. You've done your thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like uh, every time you make a choice of what you are buying, you are uh, creating at your own scale. It, it doesn't seem big, but you are creating at your own scale um, uh, a sort of vision of what is going to happen in the future. And um, if I can already uh, do this and be first happy as myself, just myself, maybe I can... Uh, have this, um, you know, uh, it, you say, I think you can say it's really contagious to mm -hmm. uh, be the, the to, to show to the, the people simply who you are, and then mm -hmm. you can inspire uh, a few people just by being it uh, rather than saying, do this, you have to blah, blah, blah. And um, this is basically how, how things went. So I hope my English is still fine. I'm sorry because I don't practice it a lot, but uh, uh, they, they, they should be able to understand, I hope. <laughs> your, your English is great, Will. No problem there. Yeah, I think what you said about voting with your dollar, essentially, or oh, with yeah. your franc, <laughs> depending <laughs> on where we are, is, is really important. And it does, it, it does kind of really show what, what it's all about rather than, like I said, saying it. And then going to the supermarket and buying processed foods like like you might have done in the past. So maybe you know if we take a if we talk about your life right now and kind of that ideal life that you've been able to set up for yourself. You talked about a little chalet in the mountains. You've got you've got you've got chickens. You you get your own eggs. Yeah. Uh, so what other steps have you taken within that framework in order to essentially align your lifestyle with your ideal perspective on how to live? I guess, sustainably, or may, if, if that's the right word? Um, well, sort of, because, um, uh, well, for, for the question, but maybe the first part, um, I, I have, like many other people, I guess, right now, uh, I always have this sort of idea in mind of um, being, uh, if, the, if the word is right, self-sufficient or something mm -hmm. like this. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. And, but um, uh, we, we are not, not at all right now, because we, we would need a, a much uh, broader um, uh, space. And uh, we, we have right now uh, um, three small, uh, so I looked, uh, I looked uh, the word. We have um, Culture Sur Butte, which is called Mound of Soil. So a small, <laughs> small mountain of soil. Basically, it's uh, one of the strategies you can use uh, in permaculture. Mm -hmm. uh, this is one that's pretty well known, <laughs> actually. And we use, um, we use um, manor or manor, uh, le fumier, uh, of the uh, chicken, <laughs> of hens. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Manor. We, we use manor and then we use... Um, um, the organic stuff from the, the kitchen, so compost. Um, okay. yeah, and compost. Uh, we, yeah, we, we make different layers basically, and it helps to have a, a really a fertile uh, soil uh, di directly at the beginning, like the first, very first year, the first weeks, you can directly have a, um, a, a very nice soil. It's uh, mm -hmm. not yet the, the, the soil, but uh, you, can, you can start directly. Uh, and uh, we, we already had a few potatoes. Uh, we live in a, uh, at 1,650 meters, so it's quite high. Okay. It's um, high. And yeah, still here, we can grow potatoes, carrots with us, it's not really surprising, tomatoes as well. Mm -hmm. but we we even had a few sweet potatoes, which is 
nice. quite impressive, <laughs> I have to say, <laughs> at this height. We, we weren't really sure it was going to happen, but well, we, we had a few and we are really proud of it. <laughs> mm. But uh, yeah, especially we have... Um, we have um, we have a few um, hen. We we have chickens, and uh, we uh, we we don't have them for the the meat because that's not the purpose for at least my uh, uh, my girlfriend and myself. Uh, it's for the eggs, and uh, right now we have between three to four eggs per day, and mm-hmm. uh, we are going to have a little bit uh, more um, by the end of the year, probably around seven to eight per day, which is a uh, four for myself and four for my girlfriend, which is which is enough for us uh, for for this part so mm. it's pretty nice it means that the the hardest part probably uh, right now i would say for the good quality nutrition is having uh, proteins that are uh, in really really good quality if you look um, what's more expensive between carbs uh, lipids and uh, proteins proteins are always going to be more expensive mm-hmm. and it's normal um, i mean it's uh, basically it's linked to the, the the basic chemistry of it you have uh, you have nitrogen and um, nitrogen is uh, is more uh, rare in uh, in nature you have uh, pretty much 10 times more uh, carbons than uh, than nitrogen this is something that you 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 talk about a lot in permaculture as well so mm-hmm. um as this is more difficult uh, basically you want to get uh, nitrogen from the atmosphere you can get this with storm but this is not the best way to get proteins <laughs> so to, the, the first thing you need is uh, plants and from plants you have uh, an interaction with uh, with bacteria which helps them to um to catch the nitrogen from the, the atmosphere, mm. and then you get uh, uh, high nat- nitrogen types of plants like like soy, for example, uh, but also like lentils and uh, and other other stuff. And then, uh, depending on what uh, the, the way you want to consume your proteins, you can uh, you can have a plant plant based protein, um, and you have many ways to consume them uh, better than completely raw. You can cook them. You can make. Um, um, uh, fermented type food you can also right. have a, uh, how do you say germination i don't you have sprout, the word in... you sprout them yes yeah, sprout, you can sprout them thank you and um, you, you have all this um, different combination that you that you can use but um the the a little bit higher uh, quality type protein uh, eggs are basically the the, the reference for the the, the the essential amino acids and basically the the whole contents you, you cannot do much better than what you get in the in the egg yolk so mm. um, that's that's a pretty strong base and uh, we decided that as uh, the, so just a little bit of a, a story here we I, I learned mm. in Switzerland and uh, I was basically really really angry and this doesn't happen quite often and it was because of uh, what happened to to the animals basically. Uh, for um, how do you say les poussins, uh, so the small chickens, the chicks, chicks, the chicks. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so basically, the the chicks. In a, there's a law um, that uh, says you cannot um, you cannot put them in a machine that uh, them. I don't know how you say this, but basically, this this was not allowed anymore. Mm. And I thought, well, cool. So the males are not going to be killed directly when they. Uh, well, anyway, uh, but uh, the alternative. And this is what I learned was uh, basically they, are, they were going to use gas instead. Okay. So it was like, wow. So in my mind, uh, you know, like uh, I was happy for something that wasn't happening actually. And it's like, okay, we made, we made one big step uh, uh, relative to uh, male chicks. And, uh, and that was important. We're not talking about, you know, a few hundreds per year. We're talking about millions. And that's, mm-hmm. that's pretty crazy when you think about it. So I'm sorry for the, the audience. That's not the happiest moment of the podcast. But anyway, that's, that was the moment. And I really, uh, really I got angry, basically. And I started to think, okay, what I can do now? Because I don't want to be uh, completely part of this. That's just not me. I'm not aligned at all with this. And still, the eggs are amazing. But um, so you want to be part of the world. You want to have a good nutrition. You don't want to uh, die sooner or have poor health. Or Okay, so I'm, I'm ready to do um, the concession. Concession? No. Um, uh, yeah, um, concessions or sacrifices. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm okay to do sacrifices compared to my ideal in my mind if i may Mm -hmm. say but uh for for my health because i consider that uh, you know uh, if we 
are okay to eat uh, animal products, let's do it the best way we can. And uh, we ended up having uh, uh, hen houses, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, instead of going to the supermarket and uh, seeing the different numbers you can find on eggs with uh, the types of um, uh, production, and um, you, you, you can have simply have your own hens. And uh, the funny thing is that, uh, you know, they have their... Uh, they have their, their 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 character as well. <laughs> you know, they're a little bit different, and <laughs> it's do. like a cat, it's like a like a dog. It sounds special to say this, but when you do. We we enjoy this quite a lot. We are really. Um, you know, even if we both um, work um, uh, in the fitness industry and uh, we, we, we practice uh, reinforcement and all that, we are pretty sensitive. Uh, and uh, yeah, we, we, we really like this um, um, be, being with animals. And, uh, and we, we cannot imagine actually that you can just uh, kill so easily this amount of animal etc and my, my goal was if I have to be uh, an omnivore I need to uh, be able myself to kill the animal I'm going to eat mm -hmm. and it's not the case so far at least so as I'm not able myself to kill the animal uh, because you know it's everyone can buy uh, meat in the supermarket it's already uh, plastified and all that but uh, you know you're not a hunter <laughs> you're not a hunter you, you haven't done everything uh, but uh, you know in a way I can say that I have a sort of respect for the, the the hunters that are going to hunt what they are going to eat I don't know if they do the whole process but um, let's say they do that that's um, that's I, I would say a good level of coherence Mm -hmm. My understanding right now, and this is not a judgment for, for anyone, is that you, you don't even need to eat meat to be in perfect health. Meat can be a perfectly healthy um, type of uh, food, especially if you also eat the gelatinous part. I think it's, it can be perfectly balanced for the amino acids and all that, and uh, it can be very, very interesting. Um, but... Um, Personally, that this is not where I want to go because uh, um, I haven't been so far. I'm not well, yet, if I may say, but I don't think it's going to happen. I'm not able to kill the animal myself to be able to eat it. So that's where I decided to stop simply for my own you know, considerations or philosophy, as you said. So if this helps a little bit to understand. It does. So I like that you talked of, about the proteins and the quality proteins and, and where that might come from. Do you, do you still outsource some of your... Uh, let's say protein content, do you go to local farmers to buy maybe meat from them because you know how those animals have been have been raised and treated uh, or do you do you stick just to maybe the the, the plant based proteins and then the the eggs so uh Basically, eggs first. Um, the second thing, uh, maybe we can talk about da dairy a little bit after, but um, mm -hmm. dairy is uh, the, my second um, uh, protein source. And um, I would say pretty much once per month, and this is the... Um, um, well, th this was the, the toughest um, decision uh, around this concept that, that I made. We eat uh, beef liver. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, in Switzerland, we have something uh, called uh, Farmi, well, anyway. Um, it's a direct uh, connection with um, the, the, the small producers. And yeah. they are, um, they are uh, explaining uh, all the stages of uh, processing, if I may say. And for the, the beef liver, uh, I think there's even... Um, a veterinaire? I don't know how you say it. Yeah. A vet, yeah, thanks. There's a, there's a vet coming um, for the the, the, you know, the, end, the end of the life of the animal, and it's, you know, completely different. So, um, and they are using every single part of the animal, which is one really important part, at least from my perspective, because, mm. uh, you know, if you eat meat and you eat only the muscle meat, there, there are two things at least to consider, I, I would say. First is that you eat basically... Um, a part that is really, really rich in, in methionine, which is um, a sulfur amino acid, uh, which can be problematic in excess. Um, and, um, and if it's not balanced with the gelatinous part, which contains a lot of glycine, which is a, a, a ratio you, you should try to aim for is four glycine for one methionine at the end of the day. So mm. that's why you have all these amazing properties of collagen uh, right now. And uh, basically even in 
cosmetics this is a huge business so this is not something that's completely new but uh, mm. um, in the principle it's also sort of a respect i would say for the animals so if you take a life which is what it is and uh, you want to respect the most out of the life you've taken uh, and you can eat you know all the things and have for, for example oxtails it, it's something you can you can have which is really rich uh, in collagen mm. and uh, and actually it's pretty good for it's, it's just incredibly good for your health so there's um you know more respect for you and for the animals so that that's the kind of things you you can you can have and we uh well i, I myself i eat only the, the liver um, and this is for uh, many things but uh, especially for uh, retinol so vitamin a not uh, beta carotene the pro vitamin a but the vitamin a directly uh, which has a physiological role, really, really important one, basically, especially for steroid hormones uh, regulation, also testosterone and all that. Um, and um, yeah, so beef liver once per month, animal protein, eggs every day, um, milk or milk, milk products, dairy products, uh, pretty much every day as well. So uh, I have more than enough, no problem for this. And uh, mm. the problem was, uh, so what we do for milk? Do we have, do we have cows? Or <laughs> and, and we don't, but we have a farm like literally five minutes away from where we live. And uh, we, get, um, uh, a raw, we get raw milk from the, the cows that are um, eating in the mountains, basically. So mm. it's pretty amazing. And uh, it's not the, the whole process because so welcome in my mind for a second i imagine that we could have milk from cows that uh can still uh, have their babies basically so um of course milk is for their babies first but if we can have the surplus uh, the um, yep. uh, yeah well, what 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 we have in excess that would be the perfect synergy if i may say because they do product more than necessary for their own baby but uh, that would be like the end goal, if I may say. So I will have my own <laughs> cows and uh, I would take only the surplus. Like, can I take the surplus? It's fine for you. Yes. And then I would take it. That would be <laughs> the yeah. optimal, optimal. But we, yeah, we, we're not close to this. But basically, this is something that also exists. Uh, in Switzerland, we have something called, uh, they make a little, uh, um, they, they were playing with words. They say cow passion, like compassion and mm. cow passion uh, plus the, the passion side yeah. and they they do let um, the, the baby live and uh, they so the the, princ the principle is pretty easy is that you um, you separate the baby from the from the mother uh, when you want to uh, take the milk for humans and uh, mm. then you let the le veau, I don't know how you say this uh, the, the calf baby cow the cafe thanks you you uh <laughs> thank you for this uh your no help problem. um and uh so the calf get get uh backs to 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 his mother for the rest of the day mm -hmm. and so uh, he can uh, he can drink uh, his milk it, and it, it it is his milk there's, there's no like uh it's just the way it is and uh mm -hmm. that that's pretty good i would say that's almost the best i've seen so far that we can do and uh you know we could go to the complete opposite basically what's happening right now and so it's not a surprise that you can have a, a calf, calf liver, obviously. And uh, it's so nutrition wise, it's amazing. I have to say it. But uh, uh, yeah, ideally, um, you, you know, the, the type of things I have in mind right now, uh, how, how I would like to, to have this. And there's also something really important for with, with milk is something we call the calcium to phosphorus ratio mm -hmm. and the calcium to phosphorus ratio is something that is really important important for your thyroid the health so uh too much phosphorus uh which you can find in the in beans for example as well so it's not only um, for meat um it's something that uh, can uh, activate a little too much your pth pa parathyroid hormones uh hormone which is not going to help your thyroid hormone and so having a, a decent amount of calcium related to um related to uh, phosphorus is something important as well so basically i talked about two things the quality of protein the mm -hmm. methionine to glycine ratio and the uh, uh, calcium to phosphorus ratio and these are things that are you know, not often considered, but uh, I consider them at least um, a staple for the, the health. Um, and your thyroid is quite important, as, uh, as you know. And uh, if you can at least maintain a normal thyroid function, mm -hmm. uh, that's a good way to go. So that's pretty, pretty, pretty much my whole approach. And then, you know, carbs and fats, it's pretty easy to have 
anywhere, anytime. Uh, and you can choose the local products. And uh, I'm a big fan of, uh, uh, you say G or Guy, I don't know, you're the clarified uh, Guy, yeah. Ghee, yeah, you say ghee, thanks. So uh, ghee, for example, for uh, as a cooking type of fat. Um, mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, I get the fat from uh, from the, the yolk, the egg yolks, and it's already amazing. And uh, uh, cholesterol, uh, you, you know, there's no problem with cholesterol, uh, uh, exogenous cholesterol, because uh, you, well, it's only, uh, I think, 20% of it that you you may have uh, directly in uh, in your body. Or, the, well, there's a negative feedback, I think you say this mm, like this yeah. in, in English, which helps you control the cholesterol anyway. So it's exactly. more a matter of what you do with cholesterol, which is amazing. It helps with uh, digestion for your um, acid biliaire. So... Uh, by acid, by acid. Uh, yeah, I, I believe it okay. is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll trust you on that one. <laughs> okay. Oh, let's, let's say it's right. Um, by acid, and it's also a, a precursor for um, your steroid hormones because you get cholesterol, you get then pregnenolone. Pregnenolone is the mother hormone, and then from um, uh, this mother hormone, pregnenolone, you can uh, go to DHEA, dehydro, mm. API, androstenone, and then androstenedione, and then you can go to testosterone, mm -hmm. and for women, you can go from a pregnant alone to progesterone eventually and these are uh, like a fountain of youth literally so the the war on cholesterol is not the war on cholesterol itself is the problem with the uh, the oxidation of the LDL particles, and this is another story, but just to, to, to say it simply, uh, egg yolks are probably the most nutrient dense uh, food you can have, mm -hmm. uh, except for one thing, which is what I eat once per month, it's uh, beef liver. Mm -hmm. um, so you have the, the whole picture this way. We have, you know, we have the, we have, uh, the, the two hen houses, we get, um, so the manor, the female manor from them, we mm -hmm. use this to put this in the, uh, in the garden and in the garden this is really really fertile it's really high in nitrogen mm -hmm. and then we have to balance with layers of a more uh, carbon dense uh, type of um, uh, material and then um, uh, with these layers we have our um, so mound of soils and uh, we we can uh, we can have our, our own potatoes even if we live in the mountain at this height so that pretty much sum, sum it up Sums i want to i want to come back on it, it seems like you're even though you're tending to an ideal that you have in your head and, and the, the, the life that you want to live, uh, you and your girlfriend, where you are, be respectful of everything around you, respectful of the animals as well. But you're, you're still ready to make certain trade-offs because you know that even though you have an ideal, that ideal is not necessarily attainable. Um, so, so how did you come to that realization where maybe bef from what you were saying uh, as a supermarket warrior, um, you were maybe very ideologically set in the way that you wanted things to be, but your lifestyle did not necessarily match what you were saying. Um, now it's, it's become closer, but yep. is, is it true that you know that you will never quote unquote reach the perfect state and that you will always be trying to improve and move forward? And how do you maybe deal with that I with 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 that fact with the fact that we want things to be perfect and we want you know nobody to get hurt no animals to get hurt we want everybody to benefit from what we're doing we want you know just a, a net positive uh with as many with as little negative as possible for anybody or anything so how do we deal with the fact that maybe it's not it's not possible to live a perfect life yeah so uh like everything in life, it's trials and errors. But um, when you start with um, such an, an utop utopic, uh, utopian, utopian, um, yeah. utopian um, uh, thing in mind, um, you get confronted with you know reality and uh, how, how things are. So you need first, you need to, as we say, make a living. So you need enough money to, to you know, all this cost at the beginning you need to buy uh, hen houses you need to uh, invest a lot of your own time so basically at the beginning i was uh, i was with my hand in the gardens and uh, in the garden and we, we were doing all of this thing and when you start from nothing uh, it's really it's really cool but it takes a lot of time so uh, the first thing was um try and adapt and um, when you try every time like every single time, uh, uh, you, you cannot do what you had in mind uh, at first, especially if you, if you have a, a new utopian type of mind. And um, 
and then uh, you're disappointed, you start again. <laughs> and, um, and basically, eventually, uh, you, you get the best of uh, these um, regula regulation type of uh, uh, trials and errors. So, um, yeah, in my mind, I have uh, maybe a few simple things that I can say for sure, is that within this paradigm, because... Uh, yeah, we, we can control what we can control. It's as simple as this. So uh, I'm not going to change the politics. I'm not going to change what happens, you know, at the government uh, level. But mm -hmm. what I can do for sure is that I can um, be a, a so, sort of an example of uh, the, the ideal I have in my mind uh, in my everyday life, which makes everything simpler, simpler because, uh, you know, you don't have to think about this. You don't have to... Um, to, to say different things to different people, just too much sort of construction that you've put in your mind. That would be too complicated for me anyway. So it's simpler this way. And, um, and then um, when you realize, for example, that uh, milk is really important if you decide to, to, you have alternatives for calcium. Obviously, I can talk about it if you want later. But uh, if um, this is one of the easy way to get... Um, the, the amount of calcium relative to phosphorus, at least uh, in the, the, the place you, you, you live in. Uh, for example, in France or in Switzerland, that's probably one of the, the easiest way to, to, to get um, this good amount of uh, protein and calcium. Um, you, you, you can or you cannot be ready to, to make uh, these trade-offs. And uh, the, the hard parts are when you realize, okay, I am choosing right now because I'm, uh, I'm conscious about this i'm choosing right now to accept that it's not directly my fault the way milk is produced right now you know you have uh, artificial insemination i think you mm -hmm. say this in english um you have these things and you, you could use um a bull and that would be the the, the normal way to do it and uh, uh, i hope more and more people are using the, the natural way to to do this but basically uh there's always money coming in at, at some point. And um, the, also the fact that I can live right now here um, in a chalet means that I have to earn enough money with my girlfriend from our online coaching and uh, the different projects we have. And uh, uh, sometimes also the, the money I receive uh, once per year from the, the three books I've written, mm -hmm. which is not huge, but it's, uh, you know, it's like one salary, one time per, per year that comes like from nowhere. And it's like, oh, I forgot about that. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's not uh, thanks to my books that I, I, I can live. But uh, you have basically this. So tries and errors and um, you realize uh, uh, that within this paradigm where obviously money money is the root, um, you, you have to earn um, enough to uh so within the paradigm to get out of the paradigm so i tried the other way as well because at the beginning i was living you know really really simple life like uh, buying almost nothing uh, only uh, you know accepting uh, um, uh, jeans and t-shirts from friends and not buying anything like literally uh, i could live for in switzerland for less than a thousand francs uh, per month which in switzerland is crazy it is uh, crazy so <laughs> a little bit for a little bit of perspective for people here and uh, you know i was sharing a place with uh, my my best friend and uh, so the uh, we were paying only half of the price for the apartment and all that so because everything was divided by two so uh, i went there so trying to be pretty much out of the system, you know, with the dreadlocks and all that. So it's not even a caricature. It's not, well, I'm not caricature, even exaggerating. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's a, really, I tried this way, but I realized that my power um, was not the same. So the, 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 I don't think my, um, my role is at the, a highest level it's uh, so i would go to politics or something like this if i was maybe interested in it or if i was convinced that it was going to change something that's another topic but uh, uh, right now i think the strongest message i can have uh, is uh, by by being just who i am and trying to be as close as possible to this ideal uh, without judging anyone and just uh, sh sharing also my mistakes sharing sharing my problems the the the, the things that i've tried the things that i've missed and uh, the things that eventually I got right, I may say. And, uh, and that's it. I mean, every, everyone is trying to do the best they can uh, considering their own, um, well, limitation in their mind for sure, but also their, their constraints. And um, 
you know that that's what I did, and I had a little bit of luck for a few things. I had a, I had some problems like anyone. Uh, I lost uh, I lost a few a few thousand francs because I lost um, um, I lost in court uh, with uh, something I created, um, which is uh, pretty much a my fitness pal number two, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and um, yeah, I, lo I lost that in court, and it, it, the the whole thing with the lawyers and all that cost. The, about 20,000 Swiss francs. So that was, that was quite a lot. And I didn't have this money. So I had to, uh, you know, I, I had to climb back. <laughs> and uh, I understood that, yeah, you need to um, be good in this world, but you maybe don't want to go too far if you're not good in a economy or with your lawyers and all that. So I decided to have something simple, but still efficient enough to make sure that I can get enough money to do what I want uh, and be, uh, as you know, I'm a, an, a businessman, an entrepreneur. You, uh, I don't have any uh, N plus one. Uh, so they, I'm the only one deciding what, what is happening. So as long mm -hmm. as I work enough, mm -hmm. um, I am my own limits. And this is the context I had to create in order to eventually finish uh, here. Yeah, it's so I like the living by example, you know, just being the best person that you can be. And then, like you said, through this and you, you have quite uh, quite a following and quite a, a big, let's say, realm of influence. And so maybe, you know, like you said, impacting people by showing them that it's possible to do it at your own scale, that maybe changing the world right this second to be exactly how you want it to be is not possible. But can you change yourself to be who you could be as your ideal and then see how, what effect that has on the world as a whole so i think that's a it's a very maybe a very noble way of, of approaching the the problem um of you know changing the world but at your own <laughs> if you start with your own backyard right instead of trying to hit at the higher echelons too fast and then you know who knows if we can have an impact at that at that level yeah well, that that thing you said who knows it's it's also something we can control. And uh, mm -hmm. so we need to have a, you know, whenever you learn something, you need a sort of feedback. If you go and you pass an exam at the university and two years later, you get the results, you're like, what, what happened? Like, you, you don't know. <laughs> if you get the result, like right after you're like, okay, I worked three hours for this exam and I got uh, 90 out of uh, 100, 100 points. That was pretty good. Uh, I can do better. But blah, blah, blah. you have the feedback. You know how to improve. Uh, when you are uh, living this type of life, it's it sounds simple, but actually it is simple. Uh, it is simple and the feedbacks are really close. You uh, you try, you know, things like I'm going to talk about potatoes and, uh, and eggs. Mm -hmm. huh? So, but you, you try, uh, it doesn't work. Uh, you really thought, you really, you really hoped you were going to have potatoes a few months later, but nothing worked. And basically you have to try again. And this is okay because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you can then uh, look uh, look up in the internet and see what types of soil you can have that is fertile the, the whole year. And you can find amazing things. Like if you go back to uh, what they were, were doing in the Amazon, like probably earlier civilization, uh, they, they, they do things with uh, something they call ter terra preta. Mm -hmm. which is something amazing it's a uh, um, so they burn uh, an amount of um, uh, soil with uh, a few things and uh, with uh, de l'argile des poteries uh, uh, with uh, argile? clay clay with clay okay yeah thanks so they use also clay and they have a, a sort of mixture uh, which uh, you so you don't have to um, to stop um, uh, to stop the cultures and all that you can have uh, a fertile uh, soil uh, throughout the, the whole year and that's pretty mm -hmm. crazy we don't know exactly mm -hmm. what type of micro organism you have in there and but uh, basically they, they knew they knew a few things at least and for uh, for this type of thing that's the next step i will try uh, you know to burn about a <laughs> soil with clay and <laughs> maybe i will be able to have potatoes the whole year i don't know but uh, i'm right. gonna try and i'm gonna still look up for a few things and uh, and, uh, and you know at least when there's hope a soul of hope there's life so uh, it's also something that keeps you going whatever happens and uh, i think right now that's something we may want to hear a little bit more because it's more about having one more constraint at a time and uh, you you know we feel uh, we, we don't have access to to gyms anymore and then we don't have access to that and we're like well, well that's crazy what can we do for our own immune system what can we do for this for that and i prefer this part of the the speech so what can we do many things <laughs> we can always do so many things so and that's why you know there's always an, an enthusiastic part and i always cho choose this one so that's pretty much it 
I want to transition the conversation now towards uh, you and the work that you do with your clients. So uh, sure. all the work around nutrition, lifestyle. So can you explain maybe in, in broad strokes, your approach to helping someone with their, uh, with their lifestyle, nutrition, health, let's, let's take health as, as the main thing. Um, let's maybe take an avatar, somebody who wants to lose weight. Okay. Somebody who's got okay. maybe 10 extra kilos, about 20, 20 pounds to lose, to be at their ideal weight, quote unquote. How do you approach it? What's important for you? What do you track? What do you ask? Can you just talk us through the process? Sure. I'm going to first ask you a question because I want to know which direction you prefer uh, yep. I'm going to take. Um, so uh, I can explain uh, in simple terms the, the principles or I can um, dive into the, the physiology and so a bit more scientific terms are going to be used. What do you prefer? The second option. Okay, so I can go. I can go crazy with go crazy. <laughs> scientific stuff. If you cool. if you lose me, if you lose me, I'll uh, I'll ask for uh, for some precisions on on some of the terms. But go for it. Well, okay, <laughs> so I'll trust you on this one. Um, all right. So um, the way I see life is also something that has an impact on the way uh, I coach my clients. So I'm going to start there with something really simple. Um, we eat in order to get nutrients, in order to be able to store a certain amount of energy, in order to be able to, uh, um, uh, to, to use it correctly. So mm -hmm. to make it extremely simple, uh, I start from there. Then if I go a little bit more into the details, uh, we eat basically uh, to obtain what we can call um, a flux of electrons. So um, in the end, these electrons are accepted or not by the oxygen. And if we use the oxida oxidative pathways, um, so we could go later into the PDH, LDH, and all these things if, we, if you want me to go into the biochemistry. But to keep it simple right now, you eat in order to have smaller parts and eventually, basically, you have a flux of electron and you accept it pretty well or not. And if you accept it like a, a higher complex organism, you are going to use the oxidative uh, pathway because it's something that is self-reinforcing in a way from this creation of ATP, which is the dollar of the, the human body, so adeno adenosine triphosphate, you, you have this creation of ATP, which is good. It's one way to make money in a way, but you have other ways to make money. So you can, uh, you can, uh, you can have a, a, an awful with no ethics. Uh, you can have an awful business and you can have a, a small business that is with more ethics to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. Let's say the best way to keep the, the amount of ATP we have in our body is probably the oxidative pathway and probably, and this is something I'm, I'm going to suggest right now. It's not something to say it's, absolutely clear for everyone is probably by uh, glucose oxidative metabolism because you get more carbon dioxide and water out of it. What I mean by this is that it's not only about ATP. It's also about some, um, some of these things that people call waste products. And I don't think they're waste products. Uh, when you create ATP and you get CO2, something that is absolutely not con um, controversy or some uh, controversy it's um you you create carbon dioxide and you get this bore effect the bore effect is something mm -hmm. in physiology that uh, um displaced e uh, more usually the, the the oxygen from the the, the hemoglobin and um, it shifts the the curve to the right for the, those who are interested and basically where you get more carbon di carbon dioxide you get more oxygen at this place uh, out of the, the blood so it's pretty cool you think okay, I'm going to make energy here. And then it means if I need energy here, that I'm going to send a signal. I bring back some more energy. That's exactly where you get oxygen. So it's a self-reinforcing way to, to get the money. It's like you, 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 need, uh, okay, you, you need to put um, energy somewhere and you get all the signals and everything is coherent to get energy back so you can keep moving. Mm -hmm. and this is what's happening at the cell level. So the cells that are going to use glucose with the oxidative pathway are going to reinforce this. So mm -hmm. if you start from there, you can think of it like, okay, you have primitive organisms that are going to use like uh, um, uh, fermentation. This is normal. It's a pathway. They can use glucose. They don't have to use oxygen. They need carbon dioxide anyway, but they, uh, because they, they would die if they, they, would, they didn't have carbon dioxide. So this is probably one of the essence of life. It's a mixture of carbon and oxygen. And it's a really stable oxygen. The, the, the way we have oxygen linked to carbon uh, so as a carbon dioxide, it's much more stable. That's something uh, com compared to something like a, 
um, the, the, the problems you can have with really highly unsaturated fatty acids, for mm -hmm. example, uh, if you take your fat from a, a soy, for example, like soy, soybean oil, that would be a, a pretty bad choice, I would say, in general, even if it's the cheapest uh, way to, to put uh, fat any, anywhere. But anyway, so if you get this stable, sta uh, this stable way to uh, use oxygen, um, and basically you accept this uh, electron flux, you reinforce the way you provide energy to, through your body. And this is, um, in French, the, it's easy to play with words like this because we say uh, alimentation, just like you are alim, uh, aliment, alimenté. So in English, it's like um, you... Um, this fueling would work. Yeah, okay, perfect. So um, with, uh, with fuel, um, so how, how would you, sorry, I did, I'm not sure how you would translate this. Uh, fueling, alimentation, as in, as in okay. to provide the energy for something. You can okay. alimenter yeah, une Thanks. voiture, so, you can fuel you can fuel. Oh, so it's the same. Okay, thank right. you. <laughs> Sorry, so for, for the people who are trying to learn French, we have a few examples <laughs> there. <laughs> so with alimentation, so fueling your, your body, uh, basically you can fuel it uh, in, a, in a good, good efficient way or you can fuel it in an alternative way, which is fine, but not for so long. And basically, if you get less carbon dioxide, uh, and if you get uh, less water out of it and uh, basically um, for the same amount of ATP, it's something that is going to be a little bit less self-reinforcing. So you tend to use more and th there I go into the biochemistry. So if you uh, inactivate a little bit PDH, so pyruvate dehydrogenase, in, usually with pyruvate de dehydrogenase, what you can do is that instead of using pyruvate as a final electron acceptor, you are going to use oxygen. So you go to the electron transport chain or the oxidative metabolism, the, the, mm -hmm. this pathway. If you go to the other pathway, you can uh, get really relatively quickly uh, a big amount of that ATP in a short amount of time. So it's a different type of power, if I may say. You can get more ATP in a, sh a shortest amount of time, which is uh, the way I interpret power in the way you create ATP. So, which is good. Uh, you, you do a sprint, you want to be able to go to go there, especially if the sprint is uh, for uh, 20, 30 seconds, you are going to need this obviously in a, in a high proportion uh, related to the all the other ways to, to provide energy. Mm -hmm. And um, then if you use this and uh, use pyruvate as a final acceptor, you go th through the, the other um, uh, pathway, way, which is yeah, pathway, thank you, which is lactate dehydrogenase, and you, you are going to create lactate. Lactate is okay, and um, it, it helps you at this moment basically to, um, to manage this uh, electron flux, <laughs> if I may say. So mm -hmm. you can manage this even if you don't follow the easiest road. So you use another road, it's not the best one, but then you can go back on the normal road and, and keep living. But if you do this too often, especially if you have oxygen available, this is something that's called the Warburg effect. And the Warburg effect is something you find, for example, in people with cancer. So it's not something you want to aim for. It's something that can happen, but you don't want to happen and to reinforce it. So that's the thing. And when you create lactate, it's something you can, re you can recycle after it through mm. something called the core recycle, which is okay, but it's going to deplete your uh, hepatic glycogen. So the, the, con the, the amount of glucose you have in your liver is something that is going to be used in order to recycle the lactate in order to make glucose. So basically you are buying your own money, <laughs> which is okay if you have enough of, of it, but mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not the best way to provide energy. So uh, some people misunderstood probably this part. I think I, I, from what I understood, and the lactate is the is, is actually the best fuel. You could you can put more lactates and you can uh, get more um, uh, more drinks and you add L lactate through it, etc. And you have all these things from really uh, people that have a pretty good reputation in the physiology realm. So I'm not going to going to go too far there, but I think there's a bit of misunderstanding. So it's a more primitive way to provide energy. Of mm -hmm. course, it's going to work. Of course, it's going to work in a, a relatively uh, high uh, uh, amount of uh, Power, power required uh, for the amount of energy you need, but then you need to go back to oxidative metabolism. And so you can provide more energy, etc. So as long as you have this at the beginning, it means that you, um, you don't necessarily uh, need to reorganize your body in a way that you need to store fat for later. So there's this thing about uh, Chico, so uh, Chico, uh, Chico uh, calories in, calories out. Obviously, mm -hmm. that's the main thing, but it's not the whole thing. So basically, if you eat more than what you, um, what you expend, uh, you are going to put on weight, but it's mm -hmm. not the whole thing. So 
if you uh, put on a lot of weight uh, with this, or if you put on a little bit of weight or almost no weight with the same principle, it means that people are uh, managing the energy differently. And this is where you uh, can change quite a lot of things. Right now, I'm in this paradigm. So I used to say something pretty simple, um, not really easy to hear when uh, you, you, your coach is saying this. So basically, you eat too much. That's why you're fat. Okay, cool. Thanks. I'm going to find another coach. <laughs> I need something that I can do, not, something, not someone who just uh, says I'm a bad person because you know, I'm lazy and I don't mm. exercise enough and I, I eat too much. So one part of this, sadly is probably true there's something wrong with the amount of expenses and the amount of energy you eat. okay so that's perfectly fine and it's something that is really really solid in the literature you can find this as a in the you know metabolic ward studies and you cannot go against this principle in general this is not the whole thing the thing i need to understand is why this person um, arrived at this moment uh, where it's difficult for uh, him or uh, uh, to, to lose weight when it shouldn't be uh, difficult to maintain your weight. And mm. so the way I approach this is, okay, uh, what type of things you eat? Uh, what's the amount uh, and um, what's the, um, the, the different micronutrient ratios you have? Then we go into the micronutrients and uh, we talk, for example, also about, uh, you know, glycine, methionine, uh, calcium, phosphorus. Uh, we can talk about many other things, but basically I uh, highly encourage people to get used to, to use at least a few times chronometer.com, which is a free app, uh, which uh, helps be to people to, to, to see how many micronutrients they have, not only mm -hmm. the macronutrients, but also the micronutrients, which is really important at least a few times to to see where you're at and this is also where you see that uh, beef liver for example is incredible uh, egg yolk uh, are also incredible mm -hmm. things like mm -hmm. this and then uh, we also um, look um, to uh, we, we, I look at the rest of their life. So how stressed they are, what's their professional environment there. Sometimes even something as um, close as, you know, what's happening with your girlfriend or boyfriend? How is it going every day on your everyday life? Oh, you have children or it's not going really well with your girlfriend right now. Okay, well, so it's not the main, it's not the best moment to lose weight because you're stressed out right now and it's complicated. Maybe sort this out first and maybe we, we have uh, our our call in a couple of weeks and uh, hopefully it's going to be better and well many things to see and then we can look at the the, the amount of sleep the people the, the person is having if it's four hours it's not going to have the same effect on the glucose metabolism than the nine hours and nine hours and we have a we have strong evidence for this. You can be almost diabetic, so type two diabetic, uh, in um, when when you are tested um, after four, five, six nights of only four hours. So mm -hmm. your glucose metabolism is going to be highly disturbed if you don't sleep enough. And the problem with sleep is that it's going to stress you, and stress is going to <laughs> uh, put problems uh, when you want to to sleep better. So there's this cycle which is problematic. So basically, between stress sleep, uh, environmental factors, micronutrients, macronutrients, um, the state of the person, the background, how many diets the person has been doing, if uh, she, she, he or she uh, comes out of 10 different diets and uh, this person was only losing and gaining weight for the last 10 years, it's not the same as someone who has never done any diet is going to diet for the first time. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the last example is going to be uh, most of the time much easier to deal with not to say it's a problem to deal with the other people but you have to work more on the way they are using the energy to make it simple before you directly cut again the calories so first finding a sort of balance what we call home homeostasis uh, understanding how the body is uh, using different fuels and basically trying uh, if i want to go more into the details for the mm -hmm. micronutrients something that is going to be probably closer between one Point two to one. 1.2 to 2 grams of protein. So we would do equivalent of 0.5 to 1 gram per pound of body weight of protein, depending on the the, the, the person and the goal. And uh, if the person wants to retain the maximum amount of lean mass and is going to a bodybuilding show, or if the person is basically simply trying to eat enough to maintain normal physiology and to retain a little bit of, uh, well, yeah most of the lean, uh, lean body mass uh, he or she has. Mm -hmm. And then I try to have at least two times more carbohydrates than this amount of protein for a specific goal, which is um, 
um, regulation de la glycémie. So how you regulate glycemia, yeah. uh, how you manage gly glycemia, and basically protein have an incredible effect on the insulin, uh, at least uh, good good quality, uh, quality type of protein because leucine, uh, one of the uh, really important amino acid, um, which is important for muscle protein synthesis, by the way, um, is going to have what we call the, an insulinogenic effect. Uh, so uh, you can have an insulin spike only by eating protein, which surprised a few people. But uh, um, uh, if you have this insulin spike and you provide also enough carbohydrates to uh, manage this spike, which is going to come anyway, if you eat a certain amount of good quality protein, you can avoid a, a sort of stress reaction, which is going to help you to go back to a, a normal state. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you cannot, you can never eat protein alone. It just means that probably for someone who is trying to manage their glucose level um, for a certain amount of time to, to get better, simply to have a, a better metabolism, at least for glucose, which is probably one of the main focus I have. Um, it's better to have two times more, at least, uh, carbohydrates than protein. And this mm. is um, a little bit complicated to, to suggest at the beginning when people are really afraid of carbs uh, most of the time. That's something that uh, uh, brought up a lot of time. And they, call, they, they talk about insulin, but just like it was only about carbs. And, you know, just as I said, uh, insulin is also uh, for, for protein. So it's not only because of this. And um, then I talk about fats and basically uh, that's probably uh, the, the most uh, controversial part here. I'm not 100% sure right now that the so-called essential amino acids are, uh, amino acids are uh, no, essential fatty acids, sorry, mm. are 100% essential. Um, historically, the omega-6, especially the uh, arachidonic, arachidonic acid, uh, so the, the omega-6 you can find in, um, in egg yolks once again, uh, um, this is something that historically uh, is considered um, essential, was considered at least essential. Uh, then if I want to do only the, the brief version, uh, there was something later called the omega-3 to omega-6 ratio, which is something that came uh, out after and uh, the huge um, um, raccourci, how do you say this? A shortcut. Um, the yeah, the, the huge shortcut, thank you, was uh, to say, okay, omega-6, basically, uh, they, they go in a pathway that is pro-inflammatory. And, uh, well, that, that was the shortcut. And the second shortcut was, and uh, but the omega-3 are anti-inflammatory. Uh, anti and then only what we need is more omega-3 to balance the omega-6. My idea right now is that we probably need to lower both like the highly unsaturated fatty acid especially the omega-6 mm -hmm. that we have this is something that um, uh, has changed quite a lot like i think there's about a thousand times more soybean oil right now that is used that a um, hundred years later so a thousand times is crazy it also means that before we weren't we weren't using it almost uh, at all so all, yeah, that's yeah. why you can get to so such a huge like a thousand times it's a lot so at the beginning we weren't using this and um it's it's something that it's uh, pretty well uh, linked not uh, the causal link but linked like the association with uh, with obesity and it, it matches better than sugar or other types of things uh, okay. as usual it's never one thing uh, for obesity but it's one thing you can have in mind if someone uh, shows up with a, a graph uh, the something that is pretty related to uh, the, the the increase of obesity is this another one is uh, the the decrease in temperature uh from core temperature uh, so we we can not only core but also peripheral like uh uh sous les cell, uh, actual you say the actual armpit yeah yeah armpit. Arm, armpit thank you I, actually let's let's go into this because that's a topic that you've you've brought up before and that uh i honestly had rarely heard uh, talked about in the realm of health and nutrition. So g maybe give us a kind of brief overview of why it might be important to track your body temperature and what affects body temperature, what information does it give us? Uh, just, just go for it. Okay, okay, so cool. Um, well, basically everyone uh, heard, heard about the, the temperature fluctuation you have, for example, when you have fever, so that's not something crazy. People can can understand this easily. It's something they, they check also uh, in different airports uh, right now to make sure you don't have the, the virus. A anyway, so that's something people know. But we don't uh, regulate temperature only um, um, to fight against pathogens. Um, it's something that uh, changes also for the 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 menstrual cycle um, 
you you can have um, quite a um, quite a big change uh, between the the, the moment uh, a, a woman is fertile and is not anymore. And I think it's about half a degree different. So it's uh, pretty okay. impressive what you can find. Um, so that's another thing that's uh, pretty well known, but is not often talked about. Uh, I would say at least between men, uh, they don't necessarily talk about this. Uh, and uh, yeah, the the, sec the the next thing is that we, we are supposed to uh, remain at 37 degrees Celsius, so 100 Fahrenheit. Well, anyway, uh, or pretty much 100 Fahrenheit. I'm not sure about the conversion, but um, uh, what's the, the equivalent? 37 degrees? I honestly, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll look it up. Okay. Well, keep, keep going oh, and I'll, I'll just... No worries, <laughs> because I'm not sure what's the equivalent. So, so um, if we stay at um, 37 degrees, that means... Um, just like our species, um, uh, you know, a human as a species, uh, mm -hmm. we, we're supposed to stay around there. And if it goes lower, as uh, the people know in chemistry, uh, you change uh, so many things uh, for the, the, the reactions you can have. So something is going to happen pretty much quickly, depending on the pH, so the, the, the acidity and uh, mm -hmm. also the temperature. This is something like uh, it's very it's very basic stuff. So they we we know that a few things are not going to function the same way. Like enzymes, uh, thousands uh, thousands of enzymes are not going to work exactly the same. So if basically we try to remain at thirty seven degrees, it's going to have an impact on many other things. How do you find um, uh, the, um, the 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 temperature is regulated? So it's called uh, ther thermoregulation, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, the word should be the same in English. Um, it's uh, high Highly dependent on your thyroid function. So your thyroid is going to be something that is linked to the way um, energy is managed in your body to make it really simple. So if you have en enough energy available, uh, also enough energy in your uh, glycogen, you are going to be able to convert the T4 um, in T3, in, in, in T3, which is uh, the, the active thyroid hormone, and um, you are going to be able to uh, provide enough energy to basically uh, the, the the cells in your whole whole body. So this is um, a little bit uh, too quick, but I think it's enough for for, for now. And um, um, if you want to measure something that would be called subclinical hypothyroidism, uh, you would need something that make, helps you understand um, more things than just when you me measure TSH in the blood mm -hmm. work. So when you measure, measure TSH, it's um, an indirect measure of um, the, the, the uh, thyroid function. For example, if you have chronic high cortisol, it's something that can also lower uh, TSH, but it doesn't mean you have enough uh, thyroid hormone. It's a, it's, a, it's a feedback. It's an indirect feedback. Um, and we, we could go into the, the different glands, but I think it would be too complicated to keep it simple. Um, you, it's not 100% accurate. That's something I can say for sure. So for the, the other cases, uh, you, you, you need something to measure, ideally uh, in a simple manner, uh, how the thyroid function is going and uh, you can measure the the temperature and the pulse and you can uh, well, let's keep it simple and talk only about temperature you are going to regulate uh, your body temperature the best uh, you can um, in your situation right now so if you need to provide uh, heat in one part of the body rather than another you are not going to provide heat in your hand if you don't have enough heat for your brain obviously so uh, you, the heat is going to be uh, concentrated in a way in uh, in the skull and you can measure this by um, uh, sublingual temperature mm -hmm. um, and um, if um, you are at 37 here, but under the armpit, you are at 35.5, it means you have more than one degree of difference uh, between the two. And uh, one of my uh, friends uh, who has a, uh, a master degree in endocrinology, so he, he understands the, the hormone the hormones relation much better than I do, mm -hmm. um, talks about uh, a delta that is higher uh, than 0 0.5. It is something that probably relates that you are chronically on stress hormones or if not chronically, at least at the moment you are uh, mm. using the temperature. So if in the morning you measure a temperature in, the, in your mouth and it's 37, cool. Use also the thermometer to try the armpits. And if it's uh, lower than 36, for example, it means it's the morning, for example, it's normal. You, have a, um, you are in a physio physiological way of uh, fasting. It's normal. You don't eat during the night. Mm -hmm. So uh, you wake up and you have more of the... Um, 
relais hormonal, so, so the, the, you do your hormones that take, uh, take care of the, the lack of energy uh, mm -hmm. at this moment, which is mm -hmm. normal. And uh, you typically, you have a little bit more of adrenaline, you need to go to pee and uh, basically that, that's it. But uh, um, if you can lower um, the stress hormone by providing enough energy, because the stress hormone are basically here to, um, the, the, their goal is um, you don't have enough energy, we are going to provide energy in an alternative uh, pathway, which is okay mm -hmm. for a certain amount of time. But basically to reverse this, you just need to provide enough energy. So uh, when you eat a few fruits, for example, you are going uh, to provide glucose and fructose and you are going to tell your stress hormones, bye-bye, we don't need you anymore. And uh, you are providing enough energy to produce ATP and also to produce heat. <clears throat> and the simple fact to eat enough carbohydrates uh, um, uh, considering your own requirement to maintain your temperature is something that can change this. And if you change the, um, your temperature, it means you are going to expend more energy because it's really important to realize this. Um, energy um, for um, the, the heat, um, les, les chauffages, how do you say this? In Heaters. English? Heaters, simply. Okay, thank you. Um, so in my chalet, I have a heater here. <laughs> when I use it, um, it, uh, it spends a lot of energy. So we don't have the solar panels yet. So <laughs> to make the link with this, uh, we have to be careful with that. That's why I have a, a hat on right now and um, um it, it's it, it costs a lot and so when you see the bill at the end of the month you're like okay well next time i'm going to try to be a little bit more cautious about this but if you have a good month and uh, i don't know i have uh, two times more clients than usually and things are going well just to give an example uh it's not going to be such a problem it's because mm -hmm. you provide enough energy because i have enough money so the, the analogy is there so basically your body is going to um to be uh, like a really, really good banker. Uh, so you, you are not going to uh, invest a lot of money if the times are hard, mm -hmm. even if potentially it could be a good moment to invest, but that's another story. Um, uh, at this moment, your body is going to be uh, conservative and put the things where they need to be in priority. So your school, etc. So first you change the dynamics, you provide enough, and then you let your body do what it, uh, what it needs to do. Uh, and um, that's that's the main idea about uh, temperature and why maybe it's something that's not looked enough because usually when we go and we see a doctor and uh, uh, we get this uh, blood work for um, you know at the endocrine system mm -hmm. we are going to get TSH that's the gold standard as they, as they say so it's the first measure that is going to be uh, taken and uh, usually it's also linked with um, uh, you know, insurance policy, it's something that it's uh, remboursé, reimbursed, uh, yep, you say? Reimbursed. Yeah, it's covered, something that, yeah. It's, it, yeah, that is covered by the, the insurance. So it's something, you know, uh, that's going to be used first. And if you want other measures, like you, you ask for T3, you ask for reverse T3, you ask for T4, you ask for other things, you ask for parathyroid hormone, for prolactin, for other stuff anyway, uh, they're going to say, well, wh why do you want this? Uh, we have uh, our standards here. Uh, we're not supposed to use this one. Uh, I'm not sure we can, we can pay for this, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it's another story, but it, it gets complicated. So if you want uh, an alternative system that you can use at home, uh, that it's not um, a problem, I mean, you just take the temperature, it costs 10 francs to get a, um, a thermometer. Um, and uh, you are really cautious about this. You can monitor how well you are um, providing um, energy to your body and uh, how much you rely on stress hormones the rest of the time. So that's something uh, as easy as um, uh, it, it can be, but um, out of all the indicators, um, indicators yeah. Yeah, uh, um, for all the indicators that I'm using, so um, waist circumference, um, uh, hip circumference, uh, also neck that you can use for a, a, ratio, a few ratio that gives you um, an estimation of the, the fat percentages, uh, the, the US Navy one, uh, in fact. Okay. Um, uh, th these are really important. They're, they're interesting. You can use also um, the, the weight. You can use... Um, um, on a scale uh, of zero till 10, you can use uh, how is the digestion going, uh, sleep, uh, libido, many things. You can ask about many things. But uh, the, the main indicator I use with people that uh, you know, have a compromised health is uh, right now temperature. And the, the crazy thing is that so far, I've never seen someone at 37, 37, so 37 mm -hmm. on the, the, the thong and 37 under the armpit, um, 
uh, that had many problems. Uh, on the other the way around, uh, from all the people I've been following, um, the people with the most problems and the, the, the biggest difficulty to, to lose weight had the, the lowest temperature. And um, for uh, um, an example that is uh that is funny for me because my, my girlfriend is doing some uh, competition in um, in bodybuilding so in bikini she's a bikini competitor mm -hmm. and when uh, she did the, the dieting phase uh, right at the end uh, she had a few times a temperature uh, under the armpit that was under 35 which is crazy so she was mm -hmm. really like freezing and this is something you get from a chronic uh, caloric restriction which is the goal i mean you want to be a be lean on stage and you can right. do this in different ways but basically uh, she was eating at the end close to 1200 calories which is really not a lot mm. but uh, you know first competition she did this well anyway and she was really freezing and this is something you can find in any people that goes for a little bit too long on caloric restriction uh, without thinking about metabolic metabolic health and maybe one of the good things you could uh, you could do is um, uh, applying maintenance maintenance uh, phases to to make sure that uh, every time the temperature drops um, you you can try to restore it before starting again the, to to lose weight. Uh, at least if the goal is to lose weight uh, in a way that is not going to impact too much your metabolism. But uh, you know we have different perspective. For example, I have a, a, a good friend that you know also um, Vasilis, uh, mm -hmm. and which he, he's totally right about the fact that uh, metabolic adaptations are closely related to the amount of weight you are losing. So if you lose really quickly three kilos, it's not going to impact a lot. Mm -hmm. If you lose even really slowly 35 kilos it's going to have a, a big impact so right. you know you have all these things man i think the temperature is central whenever you consider that uh, thyroid health is something that you want to maintain as as high as possible uh, during any dieting phase okay so that that's it yeah that was that was a really good picture into how you work and, and what you do with your clients I, I appreciate you coming on the show today to talk about your way of viewing the world your way of working with people and what is important to you? I think it's it's a very interesting perspective because it's it's a fairly unique one from from you know what I see usually in in the nutrition world, even in the fitness world. Um, you look at parameters that other people don't even you know consider or even talk about, and and you have found some you know some positive correlations with with the health of your your clients and then those different parameters. So I think it's it's really interesting, and I appreciate you being open and. In talking about all those things, uh, Will, for people who don't follow you yet on social or don't follow your work, can you tell us where we can find out more about you? Yeah, sure. Um, in the, um, I, I'm pretty much only on Instagram and um, and uh, YouTube. I'm not on Facebook anymore. And on Instagram, uh, you can find me on Will. Um, Oh, thank you. Will underscore coach underscore you. So the, the letter U. And uh, on the YouTube, Will Janssens. As long as you get Janssens right, it's going to be easy. J-A-N-S-S-E-N-S. -S -S -E and uh, um, more things are going to come probably on YouTube uh, right now because I'm focusing more on this uh, social media. All right, great. So for everybody watching and listening, uh, please go follow Will on YouTube, on Instagram. Go check out his website as well, williansons.ch. Uh, Will, thank you so much again for coming on the show today and, and sharing uh, everything that you know. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Thanks, man.